our native, our native, our native land. Hey -ya, hey -ya. Hey everybody, Chad Leo here, host of Our Native Land through Czech Podcast Studios in Victoria, British Columbia. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I have a fantastic musician on the show, but before we get to my guest, I would like to do a territory acknowledgement. I acknowledge with respect to the Lekwungen peoples on whose traditional territory Czech Studio stands upon and to all the nations that are part of the new channel, Kwakwakwak and Coast Salish on Vancouver Island. I thank these nations and traditional land keepers for allowing us to live work and play on their lands like i said i'm chad asleo host of our native land thank you to the viewer and listener for joining me today i'm so excited for my next guest okay here's who he is it's keanu yanko he's a canadian native american guitar player and composer he's been playing the guitar since the young age of eight when his mother brought bought him a guitar for his birthday since then keanu has taken music very seriously and by the age of 16 had already performed live with numerous groups as well as had radio airplay with his own tunes. Over the years, he has played many gigs as both a sideman and a leader in styles ranging from jazz to rock. He has shared the stage with great players such as Delfeo Marsalis, Ari Hionig, and Rufus Reed. In 2019, he graduated from the Vancouver Island University with a bachelor's degree in jazz studies and guitar. During his time at VIU, he spent four years studying with the Canadian jazz guitarist and composer Lee Elfes Elfeson. Keanu's guitar playing can be described as confident yet laid back. Based out in the BC, Keanu plays various groups uh, with various groups around Vancouver Island with the repertoire ranging from jazz standards to contemporary compositions. When he's not gigging, Keanu puts much of his time into his love for composing. Keanu takes influences from his compositions from a wide variety of sources ranging from rock groups like the Beatles, uh, jazz players like West Montgomery, and First Nations traditional music. He likes his compositions to make people feel emotions and convey a certain mood that only his guitar playing can create. Keanu wishes to continue moving forward with his guitar playing and compositions with every live show and releases that he does. Keanu will be releasing his debut album this year, Celestial Desire, uh, what looks like the fall of 2021, which he'll combine rock, jazz, and indigenous influences to create a vibrant and fresh sound. Keanu, welcome to our native land. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, what a fantastic uh, repertoire you have so far, and uh, you're still you're still young. I think you're five years younger than me. And uh, what what an amazing resume you have so far. And I definitely I definitely want to dive into it. So let's talk about um, first your indigenous uh, background and your upbringing, and sort of the road to you uh, becoming the musician musician that you are today. Yeah, so I'm. Um... I'm Havasupai, Native American. Uh, and for those who don't know, that's um, a tribe that's based uh, in the Grand Canyon in Arizona. Okay. Yeah, and that's mainly, I have a mix of uh, numerous things. Like, I'm actually born in England. Okay. Uh, and I live here now, and I have Italian in me, so I have a mix of things. But Holy, main, that's crazy. My main indigenous <laughs> um, blood in me is, is Havasupai. Mm -hmm. Wow, fantastic. So... Let's talk about your upbringing. You know what? What are you know? You get your guitar when you eight and when you're eight for your birthday. Let's let's see what happens from there. What happens? Yeah, I think like when I was like pretty young, I've always been into music, even though I didn't know it. Like it, whether I'd just be playing like my Game Boy and I would hum all the music to Mario World in my head, or I'd be able to, you know, hum it in the right key and know what the rhythms are to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then just getting a guitar, it was kind of just. Um, you know, a way to like focus my mind and energy, I guess, and to just kind of have someone to outlet my emotions or how I'm feeling, even in the early stages when you're not that great. And it was just super fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a, I'm also a guitar teacher now and, you know, from learning from then and from now, it really just helps with motor skills, your brain, your emotions. And it's really just a, uh, Playing guitar just kind of does everything, at least for me. Absolutely. Were you self-taught when you were that young, or did you have a little bit of lessons that were sprinkled in here and there? No, I was um, put with uh, a teacher of mine, uh, Jim Blair, who has uh, been my mentor up until today, who was also co-producing my album. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. So you had to, had some lessons at a very young age. 
Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Let's talk a bit about lessons in education. So you, you learn uh, as you go throughout your, your young life here and uh, you've graduated high school and you make the decision to go into, uh, you know, jazz studies at Vancouver Island University. So take me through uh, that decision and what that course was like. Yeah, I think uh, it was pretty late in the high school and I decided I wanted to do that. Um, when I was in high school, I played in like the jazz groups in school and I really got into jazz music. It was kind of a big influence at the time. Um, I really loved the improvisation of it and the compositions of it. It was just something that was really grasped me at the time. And I kind of wanted to learn more as well as advance my guitar playing and overall knowledge of music. And uh, I had known a good number of musicians from the local scene who had gone to VIU mm -hmm. and they really recommended. And I, at the end of high school, I figured, you know, let's just, do it. I didn't, wasn't mm -hmm. sure if I was going to do the full four years or not, yeah. but I ended up doing it because uh, I love my time there quite yeah. a bit. That's good. Uh, now is it, is it explain to me maybe if, like, cause I was always interested in those music programs. I never uh, did any outside of high school. Uh, is it a, mostly practical is a kind of a balance between theory and practical? Okay. Well, what's, what's the scope of that kind of course? It's, it's definitely a bit of a balance. I'd say like the first year was a lot more on paper and, and less playing. Like you'd have your private instruction and then you do your, um, your juries at the end of every semester mm -hmm. and get adjudicated. But uh, in second year, that's when you start doing like performances, um, what they call combo performances. So you have your small group and you play, I think it was like every Friday and, you know, you get your critiques and feedback. And the more you're in the program, the more opportunities there was to just get out in the community and play. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it was really fun as well as there would always be courses where we'd have our written tests or music history, jazz history, where there'd be plenty of standard university type of stuff, you know, the papers, staying up really late, doing all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just like regular studies, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, did you find that program aligned you well, uh, for, for, you know, giving you good opportunities when you leave that program? Because I, I find like, at least myself, maybe it's not the best, uh, uh, vision or opinion to have on that, but I, I feel like sometimes going to study music could be the same as like, oh, I, you know, I'm just I'm going to study economics and then, you know, I'm going to just come out of university and then, then, then what, right? Like what, what, what's the scope of that from the moment you finish and, and what lies ahead? Yeah. So I, uh, my opinion on kind of like music programs and I guess in general arts programs is I feel like it's more of a personal journey that you kind of take with it as opposed to say, I'm going to go to school, get this piece of paper and then get a job. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't get me wrong. There's definitely uh, more options available to you once you have a bachelor, whether it be, you know, applying to play on a cruise ship or, or stuff like that. But for me, it's, um, it's very much a personal journey of, bettering yourself as a musician and a person mm -hmm. and i think that's how everyone should approach those arts programs yeah absolutely now you're among many uh talented musicians on vancouver island bc and canada that have gotten uh, quite hard hit with the pandemic through COVID. obviously there's not been a lot of places where you can have a gig and be in that environment you know I love a lot of musicians i know like yourself love going to the duncan showroom and really getting that vibe and that energy from everybody so can you tell me a bit how uh COVID has affected your uh music career uh and maybe in some cases probably for the better uh with uh, your new album coming out but let's talk a bit about that yeah, it's definitely been a pretty, pretty harsh hit in terms of, um, you know, the emotions and the vibes you would get from playing with people because it's really like, there's nothing like it. We're playing something, especially if it's something you wrote and many people are at once are focused on what you're doing mm -hmm. and you can just feel that energy come back to you. It's a very surreal thing and it's sad that I haven't really gotten to do that since well before the pandemic yeah. i've done some few like um live stream stuff or like um pre-recorded things but it's not the same yeah you don't um, get you don't get that crowd vibe it's just like you get a thumbs up or something it's just it doesn't yeah. feel the same i can only imagine yeah so that's uh it, it's been really hard in that regard because that's a huge part of being a musician and it's a big part of you know your feedback as a musician as well as in terms of like what people like what you can do better mm -hmm. Um, but I will say when the pandemic started, um, I'd kind of been floating around the idea of doing an album like a few months before it. And then when the pandemic started, I kind of realized I have everything in my home to kind of get going at this. And like for like the 
first couple months, I was just locked basically in this room. And I just wrote my entire album. A few tunes were written before, but mm -hmm. wrote, arranged, and did everything. Um, so in, in that regards, it was yeah. really sweet. You know, I didn't even, I think there was a week I didn't even leave like the house, like not even the backyard or anything. <laughs> really? I was just in here. I'd wake up, I'd come here and, you know, just be super into it. So that's one silver lining of the pandemic is I really just got a focus to be in here. Yeah. I wouldn't have to go do something else. Yeah, exactly. Really um, locked down. And can I just say for being locked in a room and for people that are just listening, it's like this bright pink behind you so that has to be a mood like to be in a room at least it's a nice pink bright room i i gotta agree it wouldn't be the worst room to be in yeah <laughs> uh okay so obviously the covid uh you know you lose a bit of your live uh, performances or most of them to all you do a bit of virtual uh but instead you spend some time uh, building uh this new album that's coming out and that's what uh, caught my attention as well so let's dive into the album let's talk a bit about the sounds that are coming out of it uh, i know you've uh, incorporated a bit of an indigenous uh beat or indigenous instrumental feel to it as well so let's let's dive into that yeah, so stylistically, um, I think after university, I kind of had a bit of um, maybe half a year to kind of wonder what do I really want to take my direction in. When I was in like early high school, I kind of just wrote like rock music. I was really into like the Green Day thing, played in those type of bands. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of experience in the rock area. And then throughout university, I was writing tons of jazz and doing all that stuff. And... I think what ultimately came down to was just in those months after university to kind of have a clear head. I just started listening to everything together and started reworking some old stuff and writing stuff. And basically what came out of it was, uh, I would say most of my tunes are at the core, like jazz written, like in terms of the voicings I'm using on guitar and the form. Um, like if I was to strip these down and, you know, get an upright bass and drum on it, it could easily be jazz tunes. But with the tones I use for guitar, we're using a lot of distortion. Um, we're using a lot of arrangement ideas that I take from like modern alternative rock bands or, you know, classic rock bands. Mm -hmm. So you have like the kind of the core jazz of it, but then with this rock overtone to it, mm -hmm. which kind of creates what I would say like instrumental alt rock. Mm -hmm. And then throughout all my music, I always incorporate some type of indigenous influence. It's obviously a big part of who I am and, what my life is um and in terms of there some of my tunes are written with the sole kind of idea of a theme being of myself being indigenous what it feels to be indigenous the the proudness of it or the you know whether it be thinking about the horrific things that have happened and truth and reconciliation and all that mm -hmm. so you know some of my tunes are purely based on that um one of my tunes titled acceptance the first half of it is just with like a powwow type of drum mm -hmm. doing like a traditional type of beat mm -hmm. with a guitar melody written over it um and you can basically find other eras in the album where i'm using rattles or I'm using a melody that maybe I heard from some type of chant or song mm -hmm. that I kind of reworked into hearing it in my own way mm -hmm. and just being influenced by that. Okay, so speaking of which and about the sounds you're creating, uh, there's a clip that you emailed me when we were first uh, talking online here, and I believe it's part of uh, the new album coming out and you're in the Duncan Showroom. So let's describe it a bit for people that are just listening uh, before we go to the clip. Yeah, this one, it was from a gig at the beginning of 2020. Uh, like you said, the Duncan showroom was mm -hmm. a really fun time. This particular tune, it's probably, this one I would say is my most core like rock song. I have jazz voicings and everything, but mm -hmm. this is one I just wanted to like rock and bang to, yeah. you know, just like have those hard hitting cymbals and, you know, distorted guitars. Uh, it's called I Still Shine. It's... um it fits well into where I have it on the album. Like mm -hmm. the album is layered as kind of a concept album, even though there's not much lyrics, Yeah. but it's a concept album to me in terms of a story that I went through. And this is the second tune on it. Okay. Let's take a look at the clip. I still shine with Keanu Ianko.
Okay, wow. What an awesome clip. Keanu, thank you so much for sharing that with me. I think that's that's that type of style really kind of uh, reels me into to what else uh, you have in store. So you're saying that that is sort of the big kind of hard rock punch of the album. Um, so tell me a bit about the the structure of the album. You're kind of you said you got a bit of this layering going on. Is that correct? Yeah, I kind of like um, the way that it's set up. I kind of have it as a concept album where um, the name of the album is Celestial Desire. And that phrase to me just kind of means, you know, uh, longing for, you know, to be something more, to be who you are. So to me, the album is kind of a personal journey of who you want to be, what you don't want to be, and basically becoming the person that you want to be when you think of you know, the grand scope of things. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, every tune kind of uh, has a place in that. Um, for example, one of my tunes is called Riverside Cake. And that's basically the idea of going into a river and washing away any part of you that you don't want anymore mm -hmm. and just cleansing yourself. Um, that one is very, a uh, little more on the jazz side, but it's got some twists in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gets pretty weird, that one. <laughs> some, some, maybe some weird key changes, some time changes, some weird stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, I, I, I love getting a grasp of it. I know, I know it's not out yet, but uh, you're planning on doing maybe just sprinkling a couple singles up until, uh, you know, the, when you're planning on release. Can you kind of give me an idea of what, what the structure is in regards to your timeline uh, for people listening and watching? Yeah, so I'm aiming to get this out um, by fall, sometime in fall, and I think you can definitely most likely hear a single or two over the summer yeah. leading up to it. Mm -hmm. um, that'll basically be what the game plan is. Nice. Yeah, but you know when, uh, when uh, and I'm aware of this too, is when you're in the recording studio or when you're working on music, sometimes you got this plan, but it doesn't always quite work out. I think the music tells you when it's time, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> luckily we're right at the moment we're in a stage where almost everything is basically tracked and, mm -hmm. you know, we're just in like editing stage at the moment. Awesome. That's fantastic. Let's talk a bit about your inspirations, you know, people you look up to. I talked a bit about that in your intro, but people that really kind of sculpt the way that you, you know, interpret music and how you play music today. Yeah. Um, so when I was uh, like eight years old, I got into uh, the band Queen, which I'm sure everyone knows. Mm -hmm. And I just listened to their stuff religiously. Yeah. Um, and the guitar player, Brian May, was like really the huge inspiration of like wanting to play guitar. I would always, you know, bring a tune to my instructor. I'd say, hey, can we learn the solo to Bohemian Rhapsody or this or whatever? Um, and he, to this day, is my favorite guitar player. Just the way that he phrases things and how his playing just suits uh each queen tune so perfectly and yeah you know is able to uh stand up with freddie's voice which is amazing right uh so he's a huge part um i got really into the beatles later on which is another huge songwriting influence mm -hmm. um so I, when i was a kid it was kind of all classic rock that i was into uh in high school when i guess i was into my more angsty teen years i got into bands like green day and like punk bands we all did bands, don't you don't have to be so grunge bands about that. <laughs> well i still love i still love all that that's stuff, good i, I still do. listen to it yeah i listen i when it pops on the radio it, it feels it's like this nostalgia thing i love it yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, i've been keeping up with kind of the alternative bands that are still around today or kind of starting in the 2010s uh two of my favorite bands that are around today uh, one one's called citizen and one one's called the story so far mm -hmm. um i really love their stuff and their stuff really has um in terms of the alt rock influence on my album it's from those two bands mm -hmm. a lot um and then yeah i guess the other two parts would be kind of my jazz influence which came in later high school and all throughout university which is such a huge scope of players to pull from mm -hmm. uh the one i'd say that i just will always listen to is west montgomery mm -hmm. just his playing just amazes me his tone amazes me and he's just kind of uh kind of just my favorite jazz guitar player yeah awesome uh, but other people like pat Matheny or wayne shorter i get a lot of inspiration from compositions well I and know then of course um yeah just uh indigenous influences i always love to hear what other native artists are doing or hear various songs or chants from the nation i'm in or just kind of hear you know a different way of doing things yeah and you know it's a lot of those um 
you know, chants or songs really kind of touch me in a more emotional way that say other music doesn't. Mm -hmm. And that's something I really want to put into my music as well. And I think that's what really brings the uh, a lot of the indigenous music to the 21st century is the the idea of keeping that traditional sound but modernizing it in a way uh, that is you know palatable for you know mass media. And it's not to say that we need to change it so that way people can take the music in. It's just it's just a nice. I think it's a nice way to really. Uh, share the music in a way that people are really going to enjoy it and, and relate it to the music they're listening to already, but give them a bit of that indigenous influence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we got to wrap it up, my friend. Uh, I'd love to talk more about music uh, with you, but let's let's kind of cut to the chase. If people are listening or watching us, obviously we don't have exact dates on when your albums are coming out, uh, when your album is coming out, rather. But uh, if people want to follow you, uh, I know you got a pretty good Instagram page. If you want to do just a quick shout out to your social media uh, for people that are listening that want to follow you. Yeah, so you can find me on uh, social media, such as Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, all three of them are under Keanu Ienko. I believe mm -hmm. Instagram's Keanu Ienko Music, and then Facebook and YouTube are just Keanu Ienko. Mm -hmm. Luckily, there's, as far as I know, no one else with my first and last name, so it's not too hard to find. Yeah. Right on. I mean, if I just type Keanu, I came up with Keanu yeah, Reeves. You're, you're not going to find me <laughs> that way. It'll, I'll always be a... I, I got to put your full name in, yeah. Hey, but you know what? In due time, with the amount of work and dedication that you're putting into your music, your sound, I think it's so amazing. Uh, I hope that down the road, uh, people are going to be interviewing people saying, you know, Keanu was my inspiration. And I, I truly think that you're going to get there. So I'm, thank, uh, you. thank you so much for spending the time with me. And, and congratulations on your new album. And uh, we will definitely do uh, some follow-up uh, episode information for our listeners and viewers about you. So thank you so much, Keanu, for coming on to Our Native Land. Yeah, thanks for having me.